Hey Internet, welcome to another episode of your favorite A-plus guide, Mr. Ford's Guide to the A-plus Certification Exam. In this episode, we're going to talk about virtualization. Welcome back. Hopefully your studies are going pretty good out there and you're hanging out with us for the CPU. This video, I want to talk about virtualization. Now, I can't talk, I, you know... I can't talk about virtualization without thinking of the matrix. I really, the first one, not the other two monstrosities, but the first matrix um, about how, you know, Neo and all these other people lived in a virtual reality of, you know, mid 1990s. And, but the real world was something different. Well, virtualization is kind of like that. We're creating virtual machines. So computers that run one or more virtual operating systems, OSs, known as virtual machines or VMs. And basically, it's the ability to run more than one operating system on a single computer. And it can be one of two flavors. We can have, well, before we talk about the versions, why would we even want to do this? Besides the fact that it's kind of fun to do, but why would we want to do this? Well, first of all, if you have a legacy application, you have an old application that will not work on modern operating systems, and that happens a lot, by the way, where you'll have an older version of something, and this happens uh, quite frequently in government as well as in schools where they can't update or they can't upgrade or they refuse to upgrade, and you have a op you have an application that will only work on like a DOS-based operating system. I kid you not. By the way, be sure to check out the coffee breaks. I talk about some of these uh, fun little events in my life. But we have older applications that need an older operating system to run. And so you might create a virtual machine of Windows 95, Windows 98, or what have you to run these older applications. You might have tech support issues. So for example, if you're running a tech support center, which you might be if you're working in your A-plus exam, you might be working in a tech support area, and you have a client who's running Windows 8 and you have Windows 10, well, you need to be able to hop onto Windows 8. And so a virtual machine will allow you to walk through the steps in Windows 8 or Windows 7 or what have you. I know for me, I'm on a Mac and I'm able to run a VM with uh, Windows on here. So I can use that when we get to the operating system portion of the A+. Anything that I, you see captured is going to be on a VM, on a virtual machine. Other things, other reasons why you want to do this is try different configurations, sandbox stuff. See if it works before you roll it out to everybody. Ugh, I wish people listened to that. Don't roll out big changes to people unless you sandbox them first, folks. Let me repeat this. If you are working in an IT world and you're about to roll out a big change on the entire company, sandbox that stuff, all right? Uh, basically, you're seeing how it works in a virtual environment to see if it would make anything bad happen. And finally, it has to deal with security. You can create virtual machines on people's desktops that they're not, for them, they're working in Windows or whatever version of Windows you want them to work in, but they're actually working in a virtual environment. So if they install something bad, it doesn't ruin the entire network. So back to the two types of virtualizations we can have. We can have a native or we can have hosted. Now, native is also known as a type one or bare metal, metal, all right, metal, bare metal virtualization. And what happens here is it runs directly on the hardware. It smells, tastes, acts just like it has its own computer, its own operating system. This is the fastest of the two. Then we have one that's a virtual machine in an operating system environment. In other words, an operating system is running this virtual machine. If you have a desktop at home, you might have run VMware. That's one of my favorite ones to run. VMware creates this matrix-like thing where you install an operating system in this virtual environment. It runs on software and it thinks it's running on its own. It thinks that it's running in its own world. Well, when you're running it via software, it runs a little bit slower and has a little bit more quirks than a type one virtualization. So once again, we have the native and we have the hosted. Now, here's something to be aware of. We have different names uh, for the hardware of virtualization stuff. So for example, Intel calls their hardware, hardware, I'll get that word right eventually, calls the hardware assisted virtualization VTX. And this is found in all second-gen CPUs and the newer i3, i5, and i7s. 
And I've put in a link in the description where you can check to see if the CPU you have is supported. And then of course AMD has their own name for this and they call it AMD V. And this is found in all models that support the AM2 and newer CPUs. So that's it for virtualization. In our next video, we're gonna take a look at the current versions or the current Intel CPUs that are out there. And then the video after that, the current AMD CPUs. So until then, click that subscribe button, click like if you learned something. And as always, good luck studying out there and goodbye for now.